Hello everybody. Hey, welcome back to Circle R Ranch. My name's Spindle and I'm going to be with you for the next little bit as we learn some more about uh, our horses here at Circle R. And we're going to be saying hello to some new ones that we haven't had out in our last uh, sessions. And then we're going to be looking deeply at what we call is grooming the horse, brushing the horse, which needs to happen before we uh, put the saddle and the equipment and the tack on before we go for a trail ride. Let's say hello to Dot. This is Dot, one of our smallest ones that we have here at Circle R. You can see her height uh, with me. And she's a, a, a great little pony, good for the smaller children to be riding. Um, as we walk along here, of course, they can hear me talking. They know I'm here. I know they can hear me. I know they can see me. Keeping my hand on as I just cruise around like so. There's Dot saying hello. And as we're walking around saying hello, it is interesting to watch their ears. We talked about their ears before, um, how their ears are just like little radars and they will zero in uh, on, the, on any noise that is around them. Uh, the voice, being calm, being relaxed. And uh, a fun fact, I've recently learned that the ears have 16 muscles that help to direct them and move them forward and back and left and right, knowing that their hearing and their senses, their hearing, their sight, uh, and their smell is uh, much more um, intense than us humans, better than us people. So here's Stormy. Want to say hello to Stormy? Oh, Stormy's cruising around there so that you can say hello to Stormy. Again, a little bit even taller than Dot. Stormy's another uh, great little guy that we have here as well. And Jack. We have Jack Falls. Here's Jack. And we did redo the coloring of Jack, of that color. Remember, we were looking at the body. Neck, body is a, a beautiful brown. His points being the main tail and the lower legs. Let's look at see what color those are. They're black. So this color horse is called a, come on folks, a bay. A bay. There's bay coloring. And some other ones up here to uh, take a great look at. Our next gray horse is Cowboy. So here's Cowboy here to say hello to everybody. Gray, just look at Cowboy's coloring. It's a gray color, has the lots of white with some little flecks of the brown that are going through them. White mane, white tail. And one of Cowboy's friends that he is often with when they are out in the field is Domino. So here's Domino, everybody. Again, we talked about the big blotches of the color and generally, uh, so at Circle R, we call these our pinto colored uh, horses. And hey, if any of you are into the coloring, uh, please uh, look at it and uh, investigate because there are many, 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 many different colors of horses, many different combinations. And it's very interesting. Uh, some are even not only the coloring, but there's even horse breeds and coloring. So. Uh, it's, they're just beautiful horses to learn what all that's all about. So we are going to get brushing the horses. What we call is grooming them. And uh, we're going to look at the equipment over here first of all, because there's different types of brushes that you need to use to prepare your horse to get ready for the ride. And uh, the first brush that I'm going to be demonstrating in a couple minutes, this is what we call is a curry comb. And the curry comb, it's, it's rubbery, okay, but it's a soft rubber. You can see how I can move it here. And there are different types of curry combs. Uh, we have a number of different types here because often we have uh, a, a number of people or campers and staff uh, grooming the horses and getting them ready. So there's different sizes here. And uh, with the curry comb, the one that I'll be using then, that it's nice your hand can slide in here to be doing the currying. Or this is a rounder rubbery one there as well you can see the points on it and this is sort of a little bit more of a massager but it does the same thing too and this is great for little hands when they're doing the grooming as well then the next brush after we use the curry comb it's going to be what we call is the dandy brush or the body brush you can see the long bristles that are on it 
Again, there's so many different types. Some are natural bristles, some are synthetic. This is actually fairly firm. This is a very firm uh, bristled brush here. That will be the next one that we're gonna be using. After we use the dandy brush, we go on to what we call sort of as the finishing brush. And the bristles on here are much, they're, they're way softer <laughs> than this brush here that we're gonna use first of all. So the finishing brush, uh, we'll be using that one. And again, there's different types here, different kinds that comfort to your hand. You learn what feels good for you and really what feels good um, for the application to the horse. Some will like a different one than another one, kind of, and depending on what your end uh, and finishing is for your horse. Nice, lovely little soft one here. This is actually what we call is the face brush. So it's even softer, a little bit smaller there so that you can do the face than even this one here. It's just a little bit softer, but similar to your finishing brush here. There's many different types of combs too, as well. And I will be demonstrating them for totally the mane and the tail. Um, like you don't want to be pulling on their hair when you're doing it. So I'll be showing you that technique, but there's just different ones that work depending on what the, truly the situation is for their mane and their tail for getting that all uh, un untangled. And then part of the whole getting ready for the ride is also uh, cleaning out the bottom of their hoof, which we did that last session, showing hoof picking. And here's the different types of hoof picks that can be used as well. That is your very general, I'm going to say, toolkit that's needed to do your grooming. Sometimes even depending on really the weather, <laughs> this is what we call is a, it's a type of uh, moisturizer that sometimes you put on the outside of the hoof. If it has been really dry out and you're noticing that that's needed, maybe because of cracks or just a very dry wall of the hoof, sometimes we're having to uh, paint this on to their hoof if, if needed. And just to show you why I say painting, because there's a little brush in here and then you're able to do the outside of the hoof. So there's lots of other things that you may need to use uh, as you're with your horse and doing the grooming, but this is going to be the base of things we're going to use today. So let's pick our tools here. I'm gonna go with uh, this, cur this curry comb and we'll go with the dandy brush and the nice finishing brush and then the uh, face brush, which is here as well. And uh, yeah, we'll take uh, this comb along and a hoof pick. Alrighty, let's cruise on over then gang. Uh, sometimes I have a little pail that I put everything into so that I can uh, easily use it. For right now, I'm just gonna set the tools over here in the grass and then we'll be able to use them as well. So grooming is essential for uh, a, a number of reasons and in no um, importance order. It's used to remove the dirt from the horse, used to re uh, loosen up the hair and you are paying particular attention that there's no uh, dirt where you're going to be putting the saddle. Um, you want to pay particular attention to that because that could be uncomfortable for them as well. And it helps with their, um, with their blood, it encourages and helps with their blood and their circulation on their body as well. And it's a wonderful time to spend with your horse. It really is. It's very beneficial truly to me as the rider and to the horse. It's an awesome time to spend together. It really is even promoting a positive relationship with your horse. And it's uh, just a really nice time um, to get to uh, know each other's and feel comfortable with your presence around each other. But all the horses have a different personality, a different temperament. And again, um, it's, it's just a wonderful time to spend with your horse. You're talking to them, they're listening to you. And you know, they really enjoy being groomed. It feels good. It feels just like a, a massage on them as well. So looking at them, yes, really their whole body is covered with hair, short hair. And that's what we call is the horse's coat. That's their coat. And with the curry comb, to start with that, we like to start really at their neck. And we're gonna go down a little bit onto their shoulder here, their back. And you only wanna use the curry comb on places that are covered with muscle, fat. Uh, you don't wanna use it on their lower legs where it's just their, really the hair and skin covering their bones. This is one that you really wanna use on sort of those meaty areas. 
And what we're going to do is I'm going to go around in a circular motion. And when I'm doing that, I'll just pull mine back so we can see here. Um, I'm going to start up here and I can go, you're kind of even ruffling up their hair. I'm even going in the opposite direction than the way that the hair lies on them. And the curry comb is doing then is it's bringing the dirt to the surface. They really are constantly losing hair and growing hair. You might even see some of that hair um, coming off them here, going around and around. And as I say, it's increasing their circulation so it can be bringing sort of the oils to the surface, which is what we want to be happening. So I'm going to keep doing this. You can see I'm just going to go to the top of their leg here, top of Jack's leg, because uh, there's still muscle and, and, and fat there and covering, but I'm not going to do the lower leg. And as mentioned, I'm not going to do the face. So we're going to go along the back here again, paying particular attention, knowing where the saddle's going to go. So I'm pressing down firmly, but not too hard, but not too soft. And uh, again, they, they do enjoy this. It's just like a little massage for them. And you can see I am standing in the nice safety zone here, watching where my toes are. Watch so that I'm very safe working around them. I'm going to take the curry comb and I'm just kind of going to go underneath here. Sometimes it can be a little, I guess, ticklish or sensitive. So you just want to be watching them. What are they doing? He's looking very calm, looking relaxed. But I do really want to take a close look in there because that is where the uh, cinch of the saddle will be going. So we want to be sure there is no dirt underneath there, along their back, even along their belly sometimes. Different, all horses are a little different, but they can be sensitive. So I'm just watching. I'm just doing a very light grooming there. More concentrating up here. Down the back. The back. This is the loins. Then we have the croup. Then we have the dock. So there's many parts to the horse, too. You can see. I just have one hand on them. Going around. I'll just switch so you can see where I am here. And again, just down to the very top here. This is a big muscle here called the Gaskin. That muscle there. I don't really want to go in here. This is what we call is the stifle. There's a bone there, but I really just want to keep this one. Whew. You see that dust coming up there? <laughs> dust in here. It's coming around. And, you know, like I, I guess I'm kind of doing it quickly here today, but, you know, you can spend... Lots of time with them. I'm knowing that Jack is enjoying this, going around and around and doing this for a few minutes here like so, getting it all ruffled up. As I say, bringing the loose hair to the surface, bringing the dirt up. And it's also a good time to really just to be noticing any anything that's different or that's odd or little scrapes or anything like that. That's another great thing with grooming as well if they're reacting with anything too. Alrighty, so I'm going to now go and get the harder bristled brush. It's what we call is the dandy brush. So I have the dandy brush. Remember, it's the little firmer bristles. And its purpose is that we actually are going to go over what we just uh, used the curry comb in, in ruffling it up, going around in the circles, bringing all that to the surface. So again, this brush is only used on their neck, all the spots that I just did the curry comb. But the action of the dandy brush, then you can see it's just sort of short little flicks. And I am really removing all that that I have brought to the surface. The dirt, the loose hair. I really think when you look at Jack, like he's really, he's enjoying it. He's liking the grooming. He loves the grooming. Again, it's a great time. I'm talking to my horse. We're enjoying each other's presence here together and increasing for his health is getting this grooming all, all the brush she's done. So he's going to be clean and short little flicks like so. You can see getting all that off of them. And even with this brush, I could then go again, just when again, longer strokes, getting that and really i'm noticing that jack is really enjoying this it's just like a massage and we all love and having a massage everybody well 
they enjoy it. They enjoy our presence. I really enjoy his presence. And it's one of the great, as I say, relationship builder that grooming does when you're together and making them feel comfortable, happy. I'm gonna get the softer brush. And this is again, a much softer. It's what we call as the finishing brush. It can go over not only the spots that we just did, longer strokes. It's just truly getting that last dust off of them, longer strokes. And it helps because it's softer to bring up the shine or bring like the oils to the surface, which is what you do want to uh, uh, help to encourage with their coat, with their whole body to help to keep it healthy. Uh, this being a soccer brush as well, where the hair goes up here, this is what we call is the flank. And it has a distinct way of growing. All the other hair sort of grows towards me. And here it goes up like this. So we can just give that a bit of a brush there as well. Now this softer brush you can also use on their legs. Again, just being very aware and mindful of how is the horse acting. I can just with my toes and everything and my safety zone here and just nice long flicks. I can go down and do their legs with this brush because their legs really is just their there's no extra fat or muscle down there. So you want to be very careful. You know, they're a little bit more sensitive on those areas of their legs. And same thing with the back end here. Oh, I got this way. Yep. Yeah. And I'm just sort of looking closely and noticing anything. Lastly, we have the face brush, which is very soft. And it's a nice little brush to use on their face. Now Jack's got a lovely forelock here how long his forelock is and what you can do with this is you can see the hair goes this way so we're giving it a little groom and like so and there's no dirt this is his cheek in here so I'm getting the cheek this is the throat and going so just getting so nice all nice and clean and all the dust and everything is off now to do their mane and tail there are different combs as we looked at, which you can use. You just want to be aware that you don't just, you, there could be knots in it, so you don't want to pull. Their hair is nowhere near as sensitive, their mane, um, to us. Like I can give it a little pull here. That doesn't hurt them, but they feel it. So um, what I often even start with is even using the uh, curry comb. And you're starting off truly at the end of the hair here. I wouldn't start up here because I can see that there's some knots. Sometimes I'm even going to hold the hair so that it's not pulling on the horse. It's pulling on kind of my hand. And then you would just slowly work your way up. So I'm going to use the, get the ends. Any of you that have long hair probably know this technique. <laughs> you start at the ends, get all the knots out of there, and then slowly move it up so you can see that. And again, it's, he's showing me it's, he's very comfortable. Starting with the little bits and moving all the way along like so. So, so you do get some hair that comes out, um, but you just, again, want to start off with the little bit that comes at the ends and move your way up. We would finish that and then even carefully, you can do their front as well, just getting the ends like so. Oh, again, you want them to, to look nice. Um, and you can finish that as well. And then doing their tail. You can do their tail as well. And the way that you do their tail is um, going down their back. It's pretty interesting. Um, their spine, I'll just say, kind of starts up here, like their backbone, their spine comes down. This is a bone here called the withers, goes all the way down and it actually goes right into their tail. So if I'm just going to gently pull the tail to the side, like there is a, <laughs> the bone it sort of comes right here. So down their tail, their tail bone, you think of a dog or a cat, oh, they can 
swish their tails. And this is how horses can do it because it comes to here and then the hair grows off of their tailbone there. And to comfort for them, if I just gently pull it to the side and then same sort of technique of starting at the bottom. I might even start with even a smaller piece like so. Get the knots out of it and work your way up. And you can just sort of decide how much you, might be a little bit of hay here. I'm gonna pull that out. Um, but as we've been watching, they sure use their tail a lot to swish flies and remove them from their body. I'll even see horses standing very close together out in the field and each tail is swishing the flies off the other fellow's face. They'll go in different directions. Uh, they know how to do that and that feels good to them. So again, standing to the side, gently bring the tail to you um, and then you're able to do the grooming of the tail. So I think Jack is looking pretty lovely. What do you think here, folks? We've done the grooming, we would do the hoof picking as well before I go riding. We did the hoof picking last session, so you can check that one out if you want to see all about the hoof picking and trimming their hooves, and that is an important, healthy uh, piece of looking after your horses as well. And Jack, you've been a, de a lovely demonstrator here, so hopefully you've learned something today, everybody. And the joy of working around and being around horses uh, is something that uh, we all really enjoy here at Circle R Ranch and taking care of them and making some new friends. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll uh, see you next time. We're gonna be getting out the equipment. We're gonna be getting out the tack, putting the saddle on, bridle on, and giving you some demonstrations on that. Have a good one, see ya!